Oh, welcome, 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 welcome. This is your boy, the host. What the most, but humble. And I do mean humble. D. Nostra Novice, a.k.a. Derek, and I'm here, of course, on a Wednesday to give you the hungry, happy, healthy people here at WrestleCram, of course. Uh, this is episode 28, episode 28 of the podcast. Um... <laughs> Before I do anything, if you're watching it today, you're watching it tomorrow, you're watching it next week, I truly do thank you for the bottom of my heart, to the depths, the depths of my loins. I truly do thank you. Without you guys, it truly, truly wouldn't be me. I'm humbled eyes each and every single time I do this. Uh, before I do anything, uh, much love to the Iron Sheik and his family. Uh, he has passed away at the age of 81. A bunch of love to that uh, that gentleman. Um, I don't know a lot about the Iron Sheik. I know a lot about the Iron Sheik, but I don't know a lot about the Iron Sheik. I would like to, I may look at that um, that documentary to uh, put, a, put me a little bit more on the Iron Sheik, but much love to that family. Positive, healing, uh, energy I'm bringing to that family. Hopefully everything is okay with them, but much love to that uh, group over there. Um, also, uh, don't forget to get your uh, questions in at Ask Russell Cram over there in the community tab. Go and do that. Get your questions in. Have a great time. We have a great time amongst us. And what I also do not forget to go to the also uh, the uh, I'm going crazy. The Russell Cram Super Club, Russell Cram Super Club at the Facebooks. Go over there. Have a great time. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, get your uh, post as much as you want. I'm posting as much as I want, and we're having a great time or whatnot. Now, here's the thing. Now, this is going to be a very late one, but actually, I'm doing this while AEW is on, like, right now, you know? Uh, so, um, long story short, like, I was talking to a friend of mine, and he was like, uh, him uh, and, and his friend, they're, like, going to the gym uh, relentlessly now. Like, they're going a lot. And he was already, like, he wasn't a chunky guy, but he was, like, uh, you know, uh, and now he's like really he looking re he's looking really good now. So I was like, you know what? I stopped doing it. I need to go. I mean, I'm paying these people. I'm not getting my money's worth. They're just taking my money. So I might as well keep uh, go. So I started hitting the gym a little harder than I usually do. I'm probably going like twice a, a day now just to get a morning workout in, eat, and then get a morning a night workout in. So um, I uh, I don't know what happened, but today was just one of those days where I was like, I am in a lot of pain. <laughs> so um, I got it in today, and I was like, I got a lot in today. It was like a chest it was chest and abs today. Uh, so it was like this and this, all this. And I'm on fire right now to this day. I'm on fire right now. So I do apologize for the late one. I truly wasn't even going to do it because I was like this. I, I'm just not going to do it. I'm good. I'm good. I'm not going to do it. But I'm a huge fan of the NXT shows, and I don't want to uh, stop. Especially when I write a script, I, I try to stick to it. Um, so, uh, today we're going to talk about Logan Paul, uh, and him wanting, uh, a lot of titles. Uh, also we're going to, uh, uh, dig into, uh, Mercedes Monet, and will she be in, uh, the Forbidden Door? Also, we're going to get into the NXT. Some, uh, challenges have been made. A lot of challenges have been made on that show for the, uh, Amer uh for the Great American Bash. <coughs> So it looks like it's going to be very fun. I, once again, I really, truly enjoy NXT. I like NXT over a lot of shows that I watch, as a matter of fact. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, you guys. Like, share, and subscribe, you guys. Uh, I, may, I may talk a little bit more about, um, you know, this uh, more of me being more focused on trying to lose uh, the weight that I am. So we'll talk about that probably later, a little later on uh, in the show as well. Uh, but first, let's talk about Logan Paul wanting all of the titles. This is from WrestleCram.com. And this is Logan Paul wants uh, wants to win all of the championships, but there's a slight problem. Uh, on a recent episode of Impulsive, the uh, WWE star Logan Paul uh, spoke with the UFC middleweight champion. Uh, his name is Israel. Uh, I'm not going to even try to even pronounce that. I'm not going to destroy his name. Uh, during their conversation, uh, the internet sensation revealed his secret goal and also why he's not going to achieve it all. 
this is him talking on impulsive. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> no, he's saying. Let me let me tell you something that's slightly uh, problematic. Uh, Paul said, uh, "I had a I had this idea one day. I said to myself, I don't think there's even been uh, a um, what is this? I don't even know what this is. Uh, it has hasn't been a um, uh, what is this? A um, simultaneous." Uh, WWE, um, WWE UFC boxing championship, uh, all at the same time. So I'm guessing what he was saying was, um, <laughs> apparently he was saying that there hasn't been a WWE superstar that had uh, a, a, a UFC championship or a boxing championship all at the same time. I don't think nobody had that. So <laughs> that's kind of weird. Uh, right away, Israel told uh, Paul that he wouldn't be fighting him despite being in the same weight class. Paul immediately backed down and said he wouldn't do that. Uh, even after today, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Paul responds, even in a, uh, even in my head, I'm an optimist. I'm a idealist. I have the vision in the in the shower too uh, I said to myself I could probably do WWE I could probably clinch a WWE uh, championship I'm confident I can do it boxing on one of the lower tiers there's a hundred different championships nowadays I run into a problem with the UFC championship because you got the belt I'm not doing it uh, Israel noted uh, that some people say things to his face, uh, but turn around and say something differently behind his back. Because of his, because of that, he respects Paul honestly. Uh, thus, thus far, uh, Paul has only had one shot at the WWE Universal Championship, as he came up short to Roman Reigns. Um, in uh, in the WWE Crown Jewel last November, he uh, he last appeared. Uh, WWE appearance was on April at WrestleMania 39, where he suffered a loss to a to the new World Heavyweight Champion Seth Freaking Rollins. Here's the thing about this: now, there's a difference between uh, doing like, let's say, for instance, you are a football player, and then you are like a baseball player. You know. Something in that uh, little group. You can probably do it. There's a lot of people that have done it. Um, there's I, I forgot who is the person who actually has a championship in a, a World Series. I forgot who it was. But there is people that actually uh, do it. Like, hands down, they do it. But here's the thing about when it comes to Logan Paul wanting those specific uh, titles or whatnot. You have to train for those things. You have to literally train for those things. Uh, let, let's let's come out. Let, let's let's come out of the closet. Wrestling is not real. Okay, it is it is scripted. Okay, it is completely scripted. It is choreographed. Yes, this is absolutely true. Okay, but the injuries, the training, all of this stuff that goes into actually being a wrestler is absolutely real. The the uh, the the things where you are attacked. The things that the, the body slams, all those things are real. You can sustain a lot of injuries when it comes to wrestling. Now that's you know that's even here or there or whatnot. If you're a very smart wrestler like The Miz, who has r rarely you know been injured like MJF as well, and you have a really clean style of wrestling, then you can uh, you know have your your uh, career extend out and until until as mu as long as you can uh but the thing is now let's say for instance you do win a world title now you are the top of the mountain you are the top of the per you're on the top of the car you're going everywhere you're holding hands you're kissing babies you're on late night you're on day daytime shows you're doing a lot of press to bring more viewers to the product that is one of the most. That's one of the biggest things as champion that you are. It's not that you beating all these people. Is can you be the person to be on these TV shows and bring more eyeballs to the product? That's the number one thing that you that we forget about when you get a championship or whatnot. Um, 
to me, you having the world title is like being the uh, the house speaker uh, in the United States or whatnot. When you're the house speaker, you're the person who can bring most money to your individual party for the next uh, uh, running of, of whoever you are. If you're a Democrat, you're running, you're trying to get that money for the Democrats. And if you're a Republican, you're trying to get that money for the Republicans. That's what this House Speaker is supposed to do. And that's pretty much what I think of a champion is. A champion is one of those people that is trying to get as many, many eyeballs on the product as possible. Now, now, uh, let's say let's let's throw this in the let's throw this in the mix. Let's say, for instance, that you do you are doing that you are the world champion and you are in UFC. All right, you have to train for that. There is a uh, they only the UFC people only like fight like what uh, I may be wrong. Probably three to six months. Uh, you know, every three months, every six months, they're 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 they have to do a, a performance and they are in intense training. This is. Not just some type of walk around the park type of situation, especially when it comes to boxing. I think boxing they even they box even less. I think it is, and it's and it's when you are challenged and you do have a match, you are in intensive training. So you're telling me that you have to do intensive training. Stop, go do press. It's not gonna. It's just not gonna happen. Uh, I, I I once again I think that uh, Logan Paul and Jake Paul. I think they are one of the biggest uh, eye grabbers out there uh, when it comes to uh, b putting eyeballs back onto actually the boxing universe. I, re I respect them for that because I was a huge uh, boxing type of person uh, and I stopped watching boxing because it wasn't as big as it used to be. So without those two, uh, you, you can thank them, you know. Or not, but I thank them for bringing more of a light to boxing now because of those two young men. And I thank them for that. And I do think I respect their hustle times 12. We're not talking about the other stuff. I'm not talking about the other stuff we're not going to talk about. I'm talking about the hustle of them just getting up and still doing what they're doing. And that's the smart thing about it. I respect them times 12. They're not even like in their 30s yet, for crying out loud. They're doing great things. So all, all I can do is that. You know, all I can say is that, you know, great job to them. I mean, I'll salute them times 12. They are doing great work. Uh, even in the WWE, they're doing great work. So, but, you know, I mean, sometimes you just can't do it. And with so much stuff on your plate, I just think that's just, that's just how it is. Uh, but once again, I do respect the the, Paul, the, the Logan Paul, the Jake Paul, all those uh, people doing what they're doing. Great job on them. Uh, on from that, I did a lot of, did a lot of talking on that one. <laughs> But uh, on uh, from that to uh, Mercedes Monet, the status of AEW Forbidden Door. Uh, this is from WrestleTalk.com. Don't forget to support WrestleTalk, uh, their website. Also, do not forget to go check them out on the uh, YouTubes as well. They do have their own channel. Great channel. Love that channel to death. Uh, an, updated, uh, an update has emerged on uh, the, the Mercedes Monet wrestling at AEW uh, New Japan Forbidden Door 2023. Prior to the recent injury, uh, since leaving WWE, the former Sasha Banks has only wrestled for New Japan and stayed in uh, stardom, holding the IWGP Women's Champion for uh, Championship for 64 days uh, earlier this year. Her most recent appearance in New Japan saw her make it to the finals of one of the night tournaments for the New Japan Strong Women's title at the uh, Resurgence show, losing in the finals to Willow, Night Willow Nightingale after suffering an ankle injury. Uh, since establishing a relationship with New Japan, uh, Monet, uh, Mercedes Monet has teased appearances for the AEW hinting that she, she'll she be in action at the AEW uh, and New Japan crossover show Forbidden Door. Uh, per Justin, uh, is it Justin? I'm not gonna, I don't know his last name. I must have put that in wrong. Uh, is it Bruce Hart? I don't know. Um, but uh, Justin of Sports Illustrated, multiple sources close to Tony Khan, has confirmed that there were significant 
discussions between AEW and Mercedes Monet before she was injured. Uh, during the match with Willow Nightingale, of course, Monet uh, took a hard fall to the outside and suffered a injury, uh, which may believe to be a, a broken ankle. We still don't know that yet, though. Uh, it's unclear when Monet will be able to return to the ring. However, Forbidden Door takes place on June 25th. It seems unlikely that the CEO will be in action on this year's card. I agree with that as well. Apparently, we still do not know what's going on. The last time I did an update on this was that her ankle was still swollen. And until the swelling goes all the way down, we do not know what is going to happen with Mercedes Monet. I would have loved to see Mercedes Monet uh, facing Jade Cargill. But the thing is, Jade Cargill is actually out of uh, action as well because uh, she's been wrestling for a very long time. So I know that she's uh, on vacation, well-deserved vacation, uh, as I may say, well-deserved vacation. Um, so it, it just seems like, you know, what do I say? I say this almost every single time. Please take care of your health first. Always take care of your health first. Then worry about your money, but always take about take care of your health. And if I have to wait another year, I have to wait another year, I will work out, I will eat kale, I will eat salads to see her at Forbidden Door. Trust me, this will happen, okay? It, it, it happens. Around this go-around, it's always heavy, heavy injuries. If you haven't noticed, around like the May, June, and July areas, there's a ton of injuries, uh, and, and there's always injuries to the high-level superstars. And she is on the top of that tier when it comes to high-level superstars. So it's okay. I can wait. I mean, I'm a big boy, so I, it's okay. Uh, in one way or another, I'm a big boy. But, you know, it is what it is. All, all I want her to do is just be healthy, he uh, uh, healing right, and when she comes back, she makes a huge Huge, huge, huge appearance in AEW like we want. Okay, much love to Mercedes Monet. I love you. I love you, girl. I love you, girl. So uh, on from that, let's get on to NXT. It was a very decent show. I enjoyed the show because the main event was something that I wanted the main event to be, which was the Women's uh, Battle Royale. Now, here's the thing. I honestly didn't. I was truly surprised on who won the, um, the Warrior Rumble, which was very interesting to me. I'm, I'm starting to put all the things together whatnot because they remember a lot of their high level heavy hidden uh women are gone like they are all gone so they have to so now you know to me i think their top four uh of course is tiffany stratton it has to be um uh uh who else jade uh Cor coral jade um i would probably put now in that mix since I've seen it, she did a lot. She was very botchy um, uh, this uh, this go around. But I am liking Fallen. Ho uh, is it Harley? Holly? Um, the ones with uh, Briggs and Jensen. I like her. Um, who else is in that mix? Um, Gigi Dolan. Um, uh, who else? Uh, JC Jane. I like her as well. I'm missing somebody. A liar of Val uh, Valkyrie. Uh, she's good. You know, so, I mean, um, I'm missing somebody. Who am I missing? Uh, Roxanne Perez. <laughs> Roxanne Perez. So, it's like about six people that are still there. They are like, they have to they have to hardly put those in. But we got somebody brand new who I really like. She's very cute as well. Uh, and I think she's really, really good. She's a very small young lady, but she has a lot of spunk. And I really enjoy watching the entire uh, 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 Royal Rumble. <coughs> My apologies. This go around. It was really fun, really innovative. The only thing I'm not feeling as of right now, the only thing that I'm not feeling about is what we're going to start uh, as well. Uh, we're going to start with the review. Uh, is Baron Corbin. Uh, Baron Corbin starts the show off, and I didn't even write anything down because his promo skills of uh, this go around was just so bad. And um, I can note it out because they're they're saying bum as Corbin, um, and he's not even talking to the crowd. That's what kills me about the situation. Like if you're getting heat like that, you know, and you're a heel, my thing is 
get with the crowd. Get 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 the crowd involved as well. Because if you get the crowd involved, what's going to happen is that you're going to get those boos. Are going to they're going to elevate. They're going to be even bigger. They're going to hate you more, but they're going to respect you more because you're talking to the crowd. He wasn't talking to the crowd. He was talking to the cameraman, and it was just not good. Uh, pretty much, um, his his everything with him was talking about. That, you know, he's from old school NXT. He's from the black and gold NXT. And without him and the people that came with him uh, to main roster, they wouldn't have what they have now. He also called the new roster uh, very fake, very soft. Uh, they were, they're not good. They're not good enough to be in the main roster. He truly, truly hates Cameron Grimes. Uh, and he thinks that he's very soft. So, I mean, I understand the story of what he's talking about. It was just... The point of you not uh, uh, giving it uh, in a really good, passionate uh, promo. Uh, and I just didn't like it. It just wasn't good. It was really, really bad. Uh, after that, we get Ilio Dragunov. He comes out and he tells uh, uh, Baron Corbin that I am not one of those people that uh, is soft or weak. I'm going to come into your face. I'm going to come into your face. I'm going to challenge you to a match tonight. So uh, Baron Corbin, of course, did agree to that. Uh, Elio Dragunov walks off, and then we get Trick Williams out of nowhere attacks Baron Corbin from behind. Now, remember, Baron Corbin did attack uh, Carmelo Hayes after his match, destroying him, raising his title up top uh, as high as high he, as high as high as he can be. So, apparently, he has beef with Baron Corbin as well. So, uh, after that, we get the um, we get the uh, Thea Hale. Uh, and Duke Hudson, they are coming out. Uh, well, Thea Hill is coming out of, of the uh, Chase University. Uh, looks, she sounds like she's sore, but you know she's trying to, you know, play that role of yeah, I'm hurt, but I'm gonna still try to be as hard as hard as can be. Uh, Charlie Dempsey comes in, like I'll see you tomorrow. Good job. You know she's getting praise now for you know stop not crying and trying to be really good now. Uh, she runs into Duke Hudson. Duke Hudson's like, uh, what, are you, what are you doing? I thought you, you know, you wasn't supposed, you know, it is what it is. So he comes, uh, she comes, he was like, well, I'm just learning how to crush, you know, the heads of my opponents. And, you know, Duke brought up a very valid point. Like, how are you going to, it's a battle royal. You, you, your goal is not to throw, not to crush them. It's to throw them over the, uh, the top rope. So she was like, oh, okay, well, you know. I'm just trying to do what I got to do, um, you know, learning as I go. And, you know, I mean, she's doing a great job. I'm loving the, the Chase U storyline. I'm learning. I'm loving everything about the Chase U storyline. And uh, I, I'm thinking that uh, Duke Hudson might just take over uh, the entire thing when it comes to uh, Chase University. But I would love to see what, what the Andre Chase is doing as of right now. Uh, but after that, uh, we get a, a backstage uh, video uh, vignette of Braun Breaker destroying the arm of Elio Dragunov and apparently he is unfit to wrestle so now it will be uh, um, Trick Williams versus uh, Baron Corbin uh, after that we get Ava Rain and the Dyad versus the Diamond Mind uh, this was a very interesting match uh, this was I'm guessing uh, well it wasn't her this was uh, Ava Rain's first match on the main, I mean, on the uh, NXT card, um, not a one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, this is her first uh, televised match on uh, on USA. Uh, it was a decent match. I mean, it's, it gets to a point where, um, you, okay, this, here's my thing. Um, I would have, I would have taken, I would have kept. Um, those two young ladies that are the NXT champions right now, um, Nyla Dunn and Elba Fire, uh, Alba Fire, I would have kept them in NXT and, and, and replaced with them. I would have put Diamond Mine, the entire Diamond Mine, and I would have put them on SmackDown. And the reason why is because, and, and, and hear me out, hear me out. The reason why is because I think that the Diamond Mind and um, and and like all of Diamond, uh, including um, uh, was it what's her name? Nyla, uh, what's her name? Um, oh goodness gracious, what's that young lady's name? Um, Ivy Ivy Nile. Um, even her, I think they have 
they have reached their ceiling in NXT. Um, and I understand, especially what I was hearing about NXT, is that you have, like, I guess, nine months to sink or swim. If you are not good enough to be in NXT, they are going to cut you loose in after nine, I think it's after nine months. Um, I think they have reached their ceiling, and I think they have destroyed the ceiling. I think they are so good that they should be on main roster. Like, hands down, they should be on main roster. And I'm so lost on why they are not on main roster, and we're just getting these vignettes on, on SmackDown, which are good. Don't get me wrong. They're good. But, you know, it's just weird that we got those two, and we didn't get the Diamond Mine, including Braun Breaker, uh, uh them going to, you know, main roster. Uh, once again, I did do a, uh, um, I, I read on something, and I put it on the show, uh, one of the, uh, the, the, the podcast, and I was like, um, that the uh, Braun Breaker, uh, Diamond Mine, Elio Dragunov, I think Dijak, all these people are, are supposed to be going to main roster. Uh, when is this going to happen? Uh, should it happen faster? Yes, I think it should. I think it's going to kind of, uh, bring the newer crew in and kind of have them uh, sink or swim and do what they got to do and have, you know, the other roster, which is SmackDown, who truly, truly needs us uh, wrestlers over there and help them out. But that's just me. Um, it, was a, like, it was a pretty good match. I love anything that consists of the Creed brothers. They're really, really good. I mean, and on top of that, you got uh, uh, Ivy Nile, who was just acting a fool, too. I mean, back suplexing uh, Julius onto one of the members of Dyad. I mean, it was crazy how they were good. They were really pretty much on top of the match the entire go-around uh, until we get uh, where Ava Rain grabs one of her ma the mask, heads butts the crap out of Ivy Nile, knocking her out, pinning and winning the match. Uh, once again, I... Ava Rain is just not uh, my fan, not in my top even 20 of women right now. I would like to see more of her. Uh, I could care less that she is uh, The Rock's daughter, but it's just I'm not feeling that. I'm not even feeling the, the schism thing. or what. I don't think she should be a part of schism. Um, it's just I'm not feeling the whole thing with that situation. Uh, but after that, we get a video package uh, with Stax and Tony D'Angelo. Now, uh, Tony D'Angelo is in prison. Uh, he is uh, doing his uh, his call, uh, and he's talking to Stax. Uh, Stax is consistently trying to tell him, hey, do not criminate yourself. We're on the phone. And then it would be the vice versa way. It was like, yeah, uh, Stax, don't do that. We're on the phone. You're trying to get incriminated. But he was like, I know my, he said, who do you think the rat is? He's like, yeah, I guarantee I know who the rat is. It's, uh, it's Gallus. It has to be Gallus. Uh, so, uh, he said, oh, what should I do? He's like, well, one on three is not a great thing to do. Um, so he's like, dude, you're the underboss. You should know what to do, uh, do it or whatnot. So hopefully he's getting some recruiting in. Hopefully we get a bigger, uh, Tony D'Angelo group, uh, which like they should have another couple of people in this group. I can't wait to see what happens with this uh, with this storyline and them eventually winning against Gallows uh, at uh, Great American Bash. Uh, after that, uh, we get a, a little video package of Blair Davenport and what she did in NXT uh, UK. Uh, she faces, uh, is it Danny? Um, uh, the new, uh, the new uh, uh, she's a gymnast or whatnot. A really, really good. She's, I've seen her wrestle before. I think this is like her third match. She's really, really good. I enjoy her. Um, she's not a real Soko. Uh, is it, is it, uh, is it real? I forgot the young lady's name. Her. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a quick match, but it was a match where I knew that Blair Davenport was going to win. Uh, I'm guessing her special was the Falcon Arrow. Beautiful Falcon Arrow for uh, Blair Davenport to win. Uh, after that, we get Dana Brooke. She's coming into the arena. Uh, she Apparently, she's part of that free agency that I love times 12 and she's saying well I'm a free agent I can go wherever I want and I want to be a part of the Royal Rumble so she is uh, going to be a part of that Royal Rumble as well um, after that we get a uh, Tiffany Stratton uh, backstage interview she's just saying that um, she is the uh, number one champion in all of WWE her title is the most sought out or the most desirable 
uh, uh, title in WWE. And the uh, young lady asks you, who do you want to win or who you think is going to win? Uh, and she says, Lyra, uh, Lyra uh, is it Lila or Lila or Valkyrie? Uh, she thinks that she's going to win. Uh, she took her to her breaking point, and she would like to see what she does again. Uh, after that, we get the Baron Corbin versus Trick Williams. Uh, we get that match. Uh, pretty decent match. I am really starting to fall in love with Trick Williams times 12. Uh, it seems like he's the problem solver, and he does a great job trying to solve the problem. He just he rarely gets to it or whatnot. Uh, so uh, where the match kind of gets to the uh, gets to the nice little saucy part was that uh, he was trying to uh, knee Baron Corbin on the outside. He runs his knee into the commentator's desk. the The whole desk pops up. Um, so that was the downfall of Trick because Baron Corbin is now working that knee uh, a lot. Uh, he does a lot. I didn't see this um, on him, but I, apparently he's uh, trained in Capoeira. Uh, uh, Capoeira. Uh, the the uh, if you if you uh, play Tegan, uh, it's the um, 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 Eddie Eddie Gordo, him Eddie or uh, probably. Uh, DJ from, um, not even DJ, DJ doesn't do that, uh, um, the other young lady that's on, uh, on Street Fighter, she's more of a Kappa where a guy, uh, person, uh, but, um, he tried to do something, his knee buckles, giving Baron Corbin the opportunity for the end of days, one of the greatest finishers ever, giving him the finish, uh, giving him the end of days for him to win. Uh, that was the end of that. We get a Nathan Frazier a hard-hitting home truth. Uh, he just pretty much did a back uh, a rundown of of uh, battleground, uh, what happened, and he uh, now he has a super. He has a senior international correspondent, which is Dragon Lee. Uh, they gave out uh, five names of Noam Dar's uh, faction, uh, <laughs> and the number one was uh, Noam Dar. Noam Dar rent a friend <laughs> what the what I thought that was really good um but uh Nathan Frazier uh has challenged on that show he challenged uh Noam Dar uh for a Heritage Cup uh match for the Heritage Cup uh after that we get a backstage uh we get a backstage interview with Mustafa Ali he's just saying once again I'm a free agent I can go wherever I want and uh, my goal now is to get some type of gold um, and put that into the books that I am writing. You know, not, I want to make sure that I leave WWE as a champion. Uh, after that, we get Wesley. Wesley comes into the mix. He was just saying that uh, I will give you a title shot if you want a title shot. Uh, but Mr. said, no, I want to earn it. My goal is to earn it. So uh, with this match, hopefully uh, around uh, or uh, you know, if I get some W's in, uh, here at NXT, then eventually I would like to try uh, to get that title. But he was like, hey, you might not even be the champion when I try to uh, go for it. And Wesley was just started laughing. Wesley is so good. Uh, he is such a super baby face. I would be lost on how they could even change him into a a heel. Uh, but uh, after that, we get the Mr. for Ali versus Joe Gacy match. Um, not a lot to really go home to on this match. Very competitive to a point, but, um, you know, Misfa just coming in, um, putting a crazy super power bomb. It looked at very botchy. It looks, it looked like, uh, Joe hit his head really hard on, uh, the, uh, on the, on, on the, the ground there, uh, for Misfa to put the 450 frog splash to win the match. So after that, the diet comes out. They attack Mustafa, um, but Tyler Bates and Wes Lee come in, and even the numbers throwing them out of the ring. Uh, so apparently, we will get more into that because we have some more about the uh, schism going through uh, their growing pains. Uh, after that, we get uh, Briggs and Jensen. They're uh, talking to uh, uh, Phelan Harley uh, Henley. And she's just saying that you know this is uh, winner takes all. Uh, try to try to try your hardest. Try your hardest. Um, and in comes um, uh, it, uh, interest and uh, blade 
and they were just uh, saying this is all your fault because uh, you wanted uh, Tank and Hank to uh, go and wrestle themselves, uh, wrestle against each other. Now they're uh, as best friends as best friends can be because they know one another. So it was like, well, we did it, and you know, we we're even closer now. And they would just start naming off stuff about you know their favorite color, you know, uh, birthdays and things like that. And he they knew it all. So uh, after that, they were like, yo, let's uh, let's all get a beer after the Royal Rumble. And it was like, no, nah, I think we're good. I think we're good. Um, but uh, he was like, uh, Gallus comes in. He's like, I don't care. We don't care if you're good, bad. You know, if y'all are in sync or not. Y'all still not even close to trying to get these titles. Uh, so they look at each other and it's like, yeah, let's let's one on one. We're gonna have a fight. Uh, so they are gonna apparently have a one on one um, next week uh, at the um, uh, at uh, NXT on Tuesday. Uh, after that, we get Norm Dar. Norm Dar is pretty much just giving out all of his members in the faction now, uh, but he still has not answered the question that was answered like a million times in this interview. It was like, are you going to accept this match against Nathan Frazier? And he just did. He does. He doesn't do it. He doesn't do it at all. Uh, so we will see what happens with that. I'm guessing we will get a match uh, for the Heritage Cup. I enjoy the Heritage Cup matches. Now, since I've seen it, I understand the rules. They're really, really fun. So I want to see what they do. It's just a very long match. You know, I will say that. It's a very long match. But I do like the Harrison's Cup type of uh, those rules. Um, after that, another person that I'm really starting to like, uh, Eddie Thorup, uh, Thorup uh, versus uh, Damian Kemp. Uh, Eddie Thorup, I'm guessing he is Native American, and he is really good. I'm really starting to like him. Uh, Damian Kemp, I'm so lost on why he's still on the roster. I'm so lost on how far we fall from grace, from having one of the best storylines to now having the, uh, just, you're just there. You're just there now. So, um, last time they, they faced each other, uh, Eddie did uh, get the win with a German suplex. Um, Damian told him that he cheated. He didn't cheat. Uh, this go around, he won again with a German suplex. But the thing is with this one is that Eddie actually, his his leg or his foot did hit the ropes. So technically he didn't win, but the ref didn't see it, so he did win. So technically he did win. <laughs> so that was the end of that. Um, he's in the he's on the ground, he's uh, on the floor, he's talking to the ref, and the ref's like, I didn't see it, so he still wins. Um, after that, we get... Uh, Don, uh, uh, Don Makato versus uh, Scripps or Reggie. Um, Don Makato destroyed this dude. Throw him like a rag doll this entire freaking match. But they gave Reggie the win uh, with a schoolboy for him to win. Don Makato is truly pissed. Uh, still attacking uh, Reggie or Scripps. And in comes uh, Axiom who is trying to even the numbers. But he gets a huge chop on the chest. Um, and that was pretty, and he does a power bomb on, uh, on Reggie or Scripps or whatnot. I thought that was very interesting. So we'll see what happens with this. Uh, I haven't seen Del McCain in a while though. Uh, not, uh, featured as a, you know, a main person. Uh, so after that we get, um, we get, uh, Schism and Schism is, uh, they're just saying that, you know, uh, they are winning. Uh, the Dyad is winning. They're consistently winning now. So it's bringing more glory, but uh, uh, Joe Gacy is like, well, I'm not. I mean, I need more. I need, I guess, to reflect, trying to figure out what I can do with this situation. But he is upset. Of course, he wants uh, to uh, face uh, the schism to face uh, Wesley and Tyler Bate and uh, Mr. Ali on the next uh, go around. Uh, which will be next Tuesday. Uh, so after that, uh, we get a. Um, did I? I missed something. I I'll go back to it. Uh, but we do get a backstage uh, package of uh, uh, Ali West, uh, Ali West, uh, Wesley, and Tyler Bate, and he was just saying that yeah, we are going to have this match uh, Tuesday. Of course, I'll be back, but I do have a match on Friday uh, for. Uh, yeah, he'll be on Friday for his uh, qualifying match for Money in the Bank. Uh, also, 
uh, he says that uh, he is um, he wants a one on one between Tyler Bate and Wes Lee. Tyler was like, no, he was kind of push off. He's like, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. Uh, Wesley's like, yeah, I get what you're doing now. You're doing it in my face now. I'm okay with it. And it is for, we're going to be friends. This is for friendly competition. So he is okay with that. We may get this match at the Great American Bash. Hopefully, hopefully without a, hopefully without a face turn from Tyler Pate. Uh, hopefully. Uh, but after that, uh, we get the women. Oh, no. Let's go back. So we got the, um, the video package with um I don't I don't know why it's in there. It's not even in here. So uh with Von Wagner and he was um uh, supposed to get in uh with the uh shrink. So they were trying to find a shrink. The first shriek he uh yelled at cussed him out. Second shriek he almost beat the dude up. And the third shrink was a beautiful woman, beautiful blonde. He was like, Okay, yeah, we'll we'll see this one. So he went into there and he uh talked to that young lady. So that was the end of that. <laughs> I don't know why I don't have it on here. But that was the uh, segment right there. I, I'm starting to like Bun Wagner as well. Um, so uh, we get the Women's Battle Royale. Um, and we I'm going to go all the way down to where... Cause, um, the, their Battle Royals are different from other ones. So I was like, eh. Um, so the uh, Fatal 4-Way was... Uh, it was uh, Dana Brooke. It was uh, Henley... Uh, it was Kiana James and Cora Jade. Uh, Henley eliminates uh, Cora. Uh, no, uh, Kiana James and uh, Cora eliminates uh, Henley. But uh, we found out that uh, Thea Hale was uh, did not technically uh, thrown over the ropes. So she comes back in and she eliminates both Dana Brooke and Cora Jade at the exact same time. And it was a huge eruption in the ring. She is the number one contender for the title. Uh, the entire Chase U is in the ring celebrating. And Duke Hudson's like, I am so lost right now. So it was it was a really fun um, battle royale. I truly enjoyed it. Um, but at the very, very end, uh, they get with Braun Breaker. And Braun Breaker, uh, they ask uh, him why did he attack uh, Elio Dragunov. He was like, dude, he, he was talking all this crap against Baron Corbin. Like, uh, he's the baddest man. Uh, he was he did all of this stuff, but I'm the baddest man, which I agree. I mean, he's been champion for a very long time. Uh, so he was like, you know, uh, I've been the baddest man, but now since Seth, uh, Seth Rollins talking all of this, you know, he wants to, he's going to be a fighting champion. And since he was the very first NXT champion and I was the most dominant NXT champion, I challenge Seth freaking Rollins on Tuesday to put that world title on the line. And that was the end of that uh, fade to black. Once again, I thought that was a very fun show. I enjoyed it times 12. Um, I enjoyed um, Thea Hale winning the title. I mean, winning the title. Winning the number one, uh, number one contendership. I do see a lot in her future. Uh, I do love her uh, her character. She's a very fun, crazy uh, character. She reminds me of like Alexa Bliss just drinking a bunch of coffee. <laughs> That's what it is. So I, I do like her a lot. Um, Braun Breaker, I do see him uh, eventually going to um, main roster after this. Uh, hopefully SmackDown. Um, and... Uh, we will see. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a match with Elio Dragunov and uh, Baron Corbin on Tuesday. We should get that. Hopefully, Dijak comes back. I don't know where where is where is Dijak. You know, so hopefully we get Dijak pretty pretty soon as well. Um, very fun show. I enjoy NXT to death. Shawn Michaels is doing a great job over there. The writers are doing a great job over there. The wrestlers are doing a great job over there as well. Great job over there. Uh, but um, on from this to uh to what I got. Um, yeah, I look, 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 and, and I've been, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, I have been avoiding the Thursday shows due to the fact that I'm like, I don't want to give out my weight, <laughs> because I am just, I, I haven't been working out, I'm just, I ain't going to lie to you, I have been eating uh, snack cakes, and I have been drinking a ton, I have been drinking more sodas than I've been drinking water, 
and it is not good. It's not, I can actually feel it in my body that I'm not well, okay? So that's why I am, I've, I've completely changed up my work, my workout habits. I've completely changed my eating habits as well. Um, I, I don't drink any more sodas anymore. Sodas are completely out of my diet altogether. Um, I'm doing mostly teas and water, uh, mostly water all the time now. Um, and I'm just, do, I'm just doing a great job now. I think I'm doing a great job now. I am working toward getting my body back to where it's supposed to be. Eventually going back to just working out once a day. That is the goal is to work out once a day. Once again, I have a friend, I have a friend uh, that I talk to on a regular basis. He goes to the gym every single day. He said that it is a part of his regimen. Even when he's not feeling well, that is his regimen. He goes and works out. That is his goal. That is what he does. He does that like he goes to work. And that's what I'm trying to put it as for me trying to, that's a part of me and that's a part of working. So the discipline just has to be there. And I was talking to one of the guys because I have two gym memberships. I'm with uh, Club Fit and I'm with Planet Fitness. I usually go to Planet Fitness way more than I go to Club Fit. And he was just saying, he was like, dude, it's just consistency. You have to consistently do it. Just like I was afraid of reading or whatnot, and I still hate reading or whatnot out loud. Um, but, you know, if you consistently do it on a regular basis, it just seems like, and if you want in the comments, let me know. I'm doing it fairly better than I was at the beginning of this go around, me reading stuff. So, I mean, I understand. I, I hate it, but, you know, it's just repetition and me doing what I got to do or whatnot. And it's not even me doing it for you guys. It's me doing it for myself. I, I truly want to see uh, uh, my daughter walk down the aisle uh, on graduation day or, or uh, eventually, you know, her getting married and me, you know, giving her away. I would like to do that. So that's my goal, um, you know, as, as an adult to stop, you know, pussyfooting around this and do what and do the work. That's the goal is to do the work. And I'm going to do the work, not only for me, but for, you know, just everybody else that's around me. Um, I love y'all so much. I love y'all so much. What do you think about, um, oh, and RIP, once again, RIP to the Iron Sheet. Uh, what do you think about Jake Paul trying to get every single title? Uh, and also, what do you think about Mercedes Monet? Do you think that she will be in a wrestling match, or do you think that she will be even a part of just in some type of, 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 of face on the Forbidden Door show. That would be the thing. Would she be somewhere in there? Um, also, what do you think about NXT? Do you think NXT was good? Do you think it was bad? Do you think uh, the wrong person won the Battle Royale? Also, do you think that Carmelo Hayes will be, uh, and uh, him and Barrico will be the headline for the Great American Bash? Hopefully, Carmelo Hayes is okay. Uh, just having two matches back to back, and they were both stellar matches. Uh, I mean, woof. Uh, they are working him. They are working him. I tell you, but uh, great job uh, for y'all. I love y'all so much. The best is truly yet to come. The best is truly yet to come. Until next time. Until next time. Love, peace, and of course, of course, of course, wrestling.